In this video, we're going to introduce you to the new Rotorlib system for flying and get you an idea of how you take off and land properly. First thing we're going to cover is the gauges. They're pretty obvious in the bottom of the screen there. On our far left, we have our speed gauge. This is in kilometers per hour. To the right of that is your altitude in meters. The middle gauge is your horizon line as well as your g-forces. That's the uh, number in the top there. To the right of that is your uh, climb meter. So you'll see there's uh, ticks up and down and numbers above and below that uh, middle bar there. That indicates your climb speed. So if the meter was to swing up to say 5 up, then you are going to be gaining 5 meters per second in terms of your altitude. When you raise the collective, you see that green bar, you can raise and lower it using uh, default shift and Z. Actually, I believe it might be Q and Z. Um, and this is your collective bar. The final gauge on the far right there is your compass and wind vane that points the direction that you are facing. In the top there, 3, 4, 1 currently and the direction the wind is blowing. Each gauge can be easily glanced at uh, at the very top to read the main component of it. So from left to right you have your speed in the top, you have your altitude in the top, you have your g-force in the top, you have your climb rate in the top, and you have your bearing in the top. Just below the speed gauge is the status of your various uh, functions. You have RPM, engine, main rotor, anti-torque, slings, torque, instruments, hull, and fuel. Just because one of them is red or yellow does not necessarily mean it's damaged. It just means that that is currently not where it needs to be for flight. So for example, I don't have the engine on, which means my rotor's not spinning. I don't have enough RPM to gain uh, liftoff. First thing you have to do is manually turn on your engine. You can't just hold shift anymore. As that's spooling up, we can raise our collective. Uh, it's generally a good idea to put it around halfway. You don't want to go all the way up because you start doing some weird things with your trim. You note that the RPM is now yellow. We're getting flight. Now it's good. We're good to go. So you can watch the various gauges uh, as they're going. You'll note that now that we've taken out, there's that white dot in the center, well, not in the center anymore, but uh, in the collective slash climb rate gauge, and that indicates the center line of our chopper where our, where our uh, center of gravity is, so you can actually use that to attempt to auto hover without using the auto hover function. When you do select auto hover, it'll put that yellow dot there. So how does the collective work? The collective is changing the way your blades are angled and by doing that when you lower it you will drop down and when you raise it you will climb. So this is different how the different from the previous system in that previous system just automatically worked your collective so that when you held shift you would climb uh, at a fixed rate, and when you held Z, you would climb at a fixed rate as well. With this, you can control your rate of climb or descent. We're going to go ahead and land in the, uh, the main airfield over here. So as we're approaching where we want to land, we're going to want to drop our, uh, our altitude. We don't need to necessarily dump speed yet since we're in a little bird. It's very very maneuverable. It's very easy to dump speed. So we're not going to lower our collective too much just yet. We're just going to angle our nose down a bit. Now we're going to start lowering our collective as we approach even closer. We're going to start nosing up and lowering our collective so we're maintaining a similar or lower altitude while dumping speed. I'm going to go ahead and drop it all the way here so we can start nosing up nicely, drop the speed, come down,
and get a controlled descent towards where we want to land. We're going to start giving it a bit more collective, not too much. Board there. You generally want to use very incremental changes in your collective, so just taps. If you hold it, it will do a, a big jump. If you're just tapping it, it's much more controlled. So we're going to go ahead and touch down. Gonna drop the collective all the way since there's no wheel brake on a Pawnee. And power down. That's it. It's pretty simple. Obviously, this is, a, this is just a Pawnee. It's very easy to handle, but once you get a, once you feel comfortable with this vehicle, you can start working on the Ghost Hawk, the Chinook, and other more meatier vehicles, potentially more difficult. Right, thanks for watching.